Lately, I've been seeing this thing pop up on social media. We are going to talk about how you can become a traditional wife. Some younger millennials and Zoomers have decided to embrace living la vida casserole, dedicating themselves to cooking, cleaning and child rearing while their husbands or boyfriends, I don't know, chop firewood or go to their job in human resources. This isn't just about personal choice or individual preferences. It's advancing a right-wing political ideology and dressing it up as a lifestyle. Oh no, women doing housework, child rearing, right wing, traditional. What has this world come to? This is terrible. Somebody please save us from this deeply misogynistic movement where women are choosing to stay home instead of working a job. So, why is this important? Three things. These women are often really young in their 20s, and they're preaching the values of submitting to a husband to an audience of other young women. Gee, as opposed to what the mainstream left is promoting to young children during family-friendly events? Also, why is submitting to a partner bad if it's done so by choice? You just said a thing with a negative tone without explaining why it's wrong. Particularly when one of the most common things women ask for in a relationship is leadership from men. The trad wife trend doesn't exist in isolation. It's linked to deeply regressive political and social movements such as Christian and white nationalism and anti-feminism. Well, we knew they couldn't make it the whole video without calling someone far right. Ignoring the fact that I bet if you actually surveyed the women who run these trad wife channels, none of them listened to Nick Fuentes. Also, how are Christians regressive? I mean, Muslims have traditional values. Are they regressive too? It's weird that only one religion was mentioned during the entire video. But again, you're just saying things are bad with no reason why. It's part of a wider shift of young people being dissatisfied with neoliberalism and wanting social change. I have no idea what she just said, so I'm going to go by what the red highlighted text says. A misguided expression of the desire for social change. Again, just one little example of what you're talking about to show why the trend is bad. I understand that this is like an outline of your speech, but at least give me a teaser so if I only watch the intro, I know why this is bad, as opposed to only knowing that this is bad. Surely between calling your opponents far-right extremists and all that expensive and fancy editing, you can afford to do that. But maybe it's not the purpose of a media outlet that clearly bleeds money to be honest about their portrayal of info. And when I say bleeds money, I mean that this 300k sub channel called Novara Media has trouble hitting 50k views on an average video, yet somehow is able to afford a staff of multiple pundits, editors, expensive equipment, and a studio. With all these expenses, there is no way this channel makes money, so clearly someone is paying for this information to be spread. So I did some digging. What is Novara Media? Who is this presenter, Ash Sarkar? Well, I found this video of her on Piers Morgan where she says this. She says, I'm literally a communist. <laughs> That's not a shock. But what is a shock is that you can buy jewelry of that quote or t-shirts that say marks on them on the Novara Media website shop, which is very capitalist of them. Wait, did that jewelry page say topple and burn? Yep, it did. You can't make this stuff up. A group of communists literally partnered with a company called Topple and Burn, which really just signifies the sort of violent behavior that communists are known for. This stuff is just right in your face. Anyway, then I stumbled across their Support Us page where it says, Defy billionaire bat media and back truly independent journalism. I wish I recorded my initial laughter while reading this because I work in this industry and there is no way that they could afford this staff with a small YouTube channel and independent donors. Also, the support page is accompanied by this video here. Mainstream media are fundamentally incapable of dealing with the most pressing issues facing society. Billionaire funders and advertising partnerships define what corporate media outlets do and don't cover. Their survival depends on pandering to the interests of their super rich funders. But thanks to our supporters, Navarro Media is free to analyze what it takes to build a society that works for us all. We're free for all to access, free from ad partnerships, free from paywalls, and free from the influence of the super rich. We'll get to why that last part was a complete lie, but first, Novara Media wants you to know that they know what the cool kids are into. Mainstream media. Mainstream media sucks. It literally sucks. <laughs> Amazing dance moves, Ash. Now let's go over the numbers. Novara Media boasts that they, at the time of the video, had 200,000 subs and 2.5 million monthly views, which sounds like a lot, but it's not nearly enough to accrue 6,000 donors. I don't know any 200k subscriber channels with anywhere near that number of donors. I get like double their monthly views, I have promoted donations in the past on many videos, and I don't even have 200 monthly supporters between Patreon and Subscribestar. So who gave them the exposure to get thousands of donors? 
you would need monthly views at least in the tens of millions to get that. And again, I stress this part because there is no way this channel pays for itself on YouTube ad revenue. As someone who is in the industry, I know that the editing alone for this Tradwife video they made cost at least 5 to 10 times what the video produced in ad rev on the less than 100,000 views that it got. Here's where things get more interesting. I went to this website here and found that Navara Media partners with a group called the Media Fund, who also partners with a group called Open Democracy. Open Democracy receives money from the Ford Foundation, and it also received hundreds of thousands of dollars in 2021 from the Open Society Foundations. Some of you tinfoilers might already know who runs the Open Society Foundations, but for those of you who don't, let's go to their website. Oh look, it's billionaire George Soros. I swear when you study this stuff enough, it feels like all paths eventually lead to George Soros. We're free for all to access, free from ad partnerships, free from paywalls, and free from the influence of the super rich. The founder of Novara Media, this guy here, Aaron Bastani, has also written for the George Soros-funded Open Democracy, and Novara Media did a podcast with Open Democracy's founder as well. So who exactly is funding you again? Also, according to The Guardian, this group called the Media Fund that Novara Media is a part of has all sorts of regulations, which means not only do they probably have billionaire donors, but they also have a politically driven regulatory organization that they have to adhere to. Novara Media is about as independent as the Young Turks. Gee, what a rabbit hole. More importantly though, and now that we know who's behind this company, this Tradwife video from Novara Media is an excellent example of using heavy amounts of propaganda to get you to believe a certain narrative without any actual evidence that what they are saying is true. So let's get back to Ash Sarkar and discuss how the propaganda works by first showing you how they only use one-sided straw man arguments. Like with the example of finances, the idea of submission is that by giving up her independence, autonomy, and power, a woman will be taken care of by a good and godly man. She serves him, he serves Christ, but only one person is scrubbing out the toilet. Okay, and only one person is dealing with an asshole boss. Only one person is repairing the stuff that breaks. Only one person is lifting the heavy stuff. Seriously, these feminists love to forget all the traditional male house chores, while at the same time being incredibly demeaning and insulting to men in their portrayals. And look, I'm not saying there's anything inherently degrading about being a mom or making nice meals. I like cooking elaborate dinners. For that matter, my boyfriend does too. Now you might say it's just a coincidence that she talks about how she can make complex meals while making her boyfriend look stupid. Surely they aren't intentionally trying to make men look bad here. Millennials and Zoomers have decided to embrace living la vida casserole, dedicating themselves to cooking, cleaning, and child rearing while their husbands or boyfriends, I don't know, chop firewood or go to their job in human resources. Women have to work an arduous day of staying inside in a climate-controlled environment while men do something stupid like chop wood or go to their job in human resources? What the hell? HR is dominated by females. You can't even give an accurate example when you're trying to crap on men. Also, the victim card. Though the idea of women being confined to the home while men do things like go outside and work isn't exactly new. Is there any comparative description here that doesn't attempt to make men look like crap? Women are confined to the home while men can just do whatever they want. Maybe they go outside and work or maybe they won't. This video has BuzzFeed levels of self-awareness. You could easily flip this and say that men are forced to do the will of a boss all day while a woman gets to stay home watching soap operas and doing whatever she wants. I bet if women actually gave men a choice to stay at home versus work for some boss they don't like or for rude customers, a giant portion of them would gladly not go to work. I feel like oftentimes I hear, and keep in mind this isn't data or anything, this is just anecdotal, could have a lot to do with the selection bias and the, you know, the yep. people who wind up in my office. Um, but that it's kind of completely acceptable to a lot of my male patients that they have a partner that doesn't earn money and that a homemaker is like a laudable position. Um, but f women that, that I have as patients don't really feel the same way. They're actually very few. Yes, as far as I can see, including the many examples of women's testimony that I provide on this channel, the reason that house husbands are almost non-existent is because women generally don't want a man who stays home. They want a guy who makes more money than they do, whether they are politically on the left or the right. This is all compounded by another one-sided feminist lie, which is that housework is unpaid. And this is presented as a kind of equality. While men and women have separate roles, they are equal in their value. Insisting on the equal value between paid employment and unpaid care work, which, by the way, is a feminist position, hence the Wages for Housework campaign of the 1970s, gets twisted into something much more sinister. 
willingly giving up financial independence. You get paid in the form of a roof being over your head. Do you know how expensive a mortgage is? You get paid in food. You get paid in the form of a car, a cell phone, electricity, water, and internet. And despite getting all this provided, the stay-at-home women are still getting stipends so they can go shopping. This feminist argument ignores the fact that most people aren't walking around with tons of loose cash. If you net 5K a month, then 4,500 of that is probably going to bills and necessities, not fun stuff. Getting all your necessities paid for, plus a small allowance, is getting paid for housework. And again, what about all the unpaid repair labor that men do around the house? No mention of that. I mean, these arguments have been so well debunked over the past 10 years that it is difficult to say that the constant repetition of things like the wage gap as scientific fact are not nefarious, particularly considering that Novara Media obviously has some big funders and is not a grassroots channel. Though really, it seems like this video is well designed to look statistical and factual, while at the same time not providing any actual evidence that being in a traditional relationship is bad for women. They can do this because they know that most people aren't actually going to question their resources. So one of the ways they give the illusion of being scientific is by providing stuff that looks like research that is not actually research. For example, As Betty Friedan found in her 1963 book The Feminine Mystique, middle-class American women who were living the suburban dream of husbands and housewifery were fucking miserable. Frieden identified high rates of depression, dissatisfaction, and dependence on barbiturates. Women being forced into a life where they were denied autonomy and the use of all of their mental faculties was decimating their mental health. See how it seems like they're providing a resource when they actually aren't? They said that Betty Frieden said that housewives were miserable. Source citation, read the entire book. Now, anything else I can do for you? Yeah, maybe read this. The Feminine Mystique. No way! I love Mystique! That's not how you cite a resource. This is a 500-page book, and I need to know which specific page you're talking about so I can fact-check you. Ash has a master's degree. She should know that. I never planned on being a journalist. I thought that I was going to stay in academia and maybe do a PhD that no one would read. I swear these people bank on the idea that you'll never look at their resources, because I actually bought The Feminine Mystique and spent several hours listening to quite a bit of it, and I didn't once hear Betty cite any studies to prove Novara Media's argument that all housewives were miserable. Betty's arguments were based on personal experience, some anecdotes, a handful of interviews she did with high school students, and pop culture magazine articles. Nowhere did I see anything like a randomized survey to see if women hating the housewife life was actually a widespread issue. Now, there may be some women out there who are unsatisfied working full-time in the home, I've seen that a handful of times in my life, but as for it being a massive issue ruining women's lives in the 1950s, well, that really was just Betty's opinion, not scientific fact. Also, Betty likes Margaret Sanger way too much in that book. If you didn't know, Margaret Sanger's past was so racist and despicable that her own organization, Planned Parenthood, had to disown her because of the backlash after people on the left found out. But it's not just the fact that this propaganda outlet doesn't properly cite its sources. They go as far to give completely incorrect interpretation of data just because it fits their bias. According to Women's Aid, nearly a third of abuse survivors say that their access to money during the relationship was controlled by the perpetrator. Women's Aid what? Where in Women's Aid can I find this? Saying, check everything Women's Aid has ever done is not a source citation. Oh look, I did their work for them and found the report. It's right here. And after seeing this page, I think I found out why they're so secretive about their sources. This study only surveyed 72 people. That is an incredibly low population size to make such vast generalizations about whether a traditional household is a good thing or not. I mean, surveys take like 10 seconds to complete. It's not unreasonable to expect women's aid to get at least 1,000 people to answer their survey. Also, let me frame this statistic differently. Most of the women who were abuse survivors were financially independent. Flipping around the phrasing actually makes it seem like being financially independent leads to more abuse. I'm not saying that every relationship where men are in charge of the finances is abusive. Just that giving up your financial autonomy and placing it in the hands of your partner is highly risky if things do indeed go wrong. Not by the data you gave. Your data says that you are technically less likely to be abused if you're financially dependent because more of the abuse victims were in situations where money was not controlled by the man. Sort of related, Jordan Peterson, an expert in psychology, recently said this about relationships with female breadwinners. It's also the case, too, that if marriages where the wife out-earns or out-statuses the husband tend to be comparatively unstable and violent. 
you can do what you like with that Jordan Peterson quote. Now, personally, I don't think money has anything to do with it, and abusive people will be abusive, regardless if you're financially independent or not. It's more important to learn about abuse psychology so you can identify an abuser before you commit to them than it is to worry about who's making what money. But honestly, Novara Media's interpretation of the data is so bad that you don't even have to have training in research methodology or data interpretation to realize that they came to the wrong conclusion. The only way you can get away with this stuff is to constantly gaslight your audience. For example, There's a conspiratorial edge to some of the big tradwife social media accounts, from pushing anti-vax and anti-mask content, to claiming that feminism and LGBT rights movements are part of a depopulation agenda. Uh, but modern feminism is completely for depopulation. The mainstream left in general constantly says that there are too many people on this planet. And not only does feminism have women like Chelsea Handler gloating about how great it is to be childless at 48, but also, what have they been telling women for decades? Don't worry about a family, use your 20s to go to college and build a career, and then in your 30s when you burn through most of your fertility window, you can start thinking about having kids. Now, the very important thing I told my daughter and granddaughters, no serious guys in your 30s. Okay. Right? <laughs> no what? No serious guys in your 30s. This doesn't even account for the many woke and feminist outlets like Cosmo telling young women to also burn their 20s having tons of sexual partners and to be unfaithful in their relationships, which are actions that will make them extremely undesirable to stable partners and cause them to end up in an abusive relationship or in no relationship at all. So much for keeping you safe, right? Do you think a cheater is going to find a healthy relationship? But you don't even have to look outside of Novara Media to find depopulation propaganda. It's in the very same video where Ash Sarkar gaslights the audience and says it doesn't exist. Middle-class American women who were living the suburban dream of husbands and housewifery were fucking miserable. In the 1950s, the average age of marriage for women was falling, and the number of children they were having was rising. Why do you say high birth rates like it's a bad thing? There's a completely negative connotation to her statement, especially when misery is described right before it. But you know all those social security and welfare benefits you woke types like? Well, those are funded by a growing population. If the population stops growing, then you don't have the tax base to pay for social security. You can enjoy that when you literal communists become old. There are so many examples of depopulation agendas going on, like this stuff that Bill Gates says. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. And that's going to be based on the number of people and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, first, we've got population. Uh, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Interestingly enough, I also found this clip during that Bill Gates speech. In fact, if you could pick just one thing to lower the price of to reduce poverty, by far you would pick energy. And now we know why the price of gas and other forms of energy have been inflated to a ridiculous amount. It keeps people poor. Also, let's go back to Betty Friedan's praise of Margaret Sanger, who was a well-known depopulationist. Read one of her books like The Pivot of Civilization. She founded Planned Parenthood to lower the population and practice eugenics. That sentiment is right in the last couple of pages of that book. And what this all doesn't account for is the many people who are being hit by this feminist sex in the city propaganda who are getting into their mid to late 30s and realizing that they wasted their fertility window and are now too old to have kids. I'm sitting here with just this horrible realization. I've been divorced for three years and in that three years I have spent most of my days figuring out how I can become physically mentally, financially, spiritually healthy enough to be able to afford and take care of a child. And not only have I taken that time, but I've done the math and it it does not work out. I am not young enough or fertile enough or financially stable enough. So again, going back to this statement here about what's being told to young people. These women are often really young, in their 20s, and they're preaching the values of submitting to a husband to an audience of other young women. Again, excluding what happens to children at air quote, family-friendly events, what have you guys been telling women in their 20s? 
Feminism has constantly been telling women to wait to have kids for things like a career instead of doing a very obvious adjustment, which is to have kids young and then spend the second half of your life, which spans decades, working on a career. No one really is, is, is thinking um, that 30 is too late yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah, well, it turns out that life is shorter than people think. You know, I've, I've had clinical clients who have followed that path, and, and some of them were women who had initially decided that they didn't want to have children and then changed their minds quite dramatically in their late 20s, which is a very common pattern and then couldn't have children. And it was just absolutely disastrous for them. They were often on the you know, artificial fertility route for 10 years with multiple miscarriages and failures on that front. And, and this is all assuming that working a career is the ultimate path to satisfaction, which is what Novara Media and books like The Feminine Mystique are suggesting. They say that housework and chores are boring and monotonous. However, a career can be just that as well. And that's assuming that you get a good one and you aren't working a career at Starbucks or a grocery store. Most of the fulfilling careers that Betty Friedan talked about in her book were arts careers, to which you are incredibly lucky if you are financially successful in. Most artists are failures. I did notice in the parts that I read that Betty didn't mention construction as a career path for women, but also stuff that sounds good like discovering the cure for cancer can be incredibly monotonous. Do you have any idea how boring lab work is? So if you're unfulfilled as a housewife, then you are probably going to be unfulfilled in a career, except now your kids will be raised by the government or some minimum wage daycare employee instead of by their parents. Though the actual answer is less about having a career and more about figuring out some sort of lifelong goal to serve that piques your interest. However, that's not really what this Novara Media video is about. It really just seems like a hit piece that's not about solving a problem, but more about making political opponents look bad. Thus, it's propaganda. You can tell because not only do they provide no solutions for a problem that they are discussing, but also, all the presenter does is name call and relate being a housewife to things that the left hates instead of actually responding to the argument. The Tradwife trend sits in the middle of an online content network, drawing together different subcultures, movements, and interests. Its focus on homemaking connects to other lifestyle content like recipes, interior decor, skincare, soft life, and homesteading which is like farming but made aesthetic. And its rigid belief in fixed gender roles, its rejection of feminism and liberal left-wing or progressive values, and its emphasis on Christianity, means that it has lent a feminine veneer to conservative far-right and white nationalist ideologies. I don't see how you're a white nationalist if you want to learn how to garden. To be perfectly honest though, it seems like the liberal types who are more into gardening, and it's not just conservatives who want to be stay-at-home moms. Plenty of people on the left want to do that as well. But of course they want to crap on gardening because George Soros probably wants you eating pesticides and GMOs while having no idea where food comes from. It's also curious how TikToks like this weren't shown about how tried wives cooking all the time keeps their kids off convenience junk foods. And by the way, this wasn't the only example of name calling. It happens a bunch of times during the video. Here's another example of it. Is the very fact that it advocates women voluntarily surrendering their autonomy by presenting it as an aspirational lifestyle which makes it so popular with conservatives, misogynists, white nationalists, and religious fundamentalists. If you want to be a housewife, not only are you a misogynist, but you're also a religious whack job and a racist. And they frame this on the level of associations like, hey, did you know that bad World War II man liked ice cream? So if you like ice cream, then you're a fascist dictator. The real irony is that they use this fringe example in the form of a person who goes by wife with a purpose and use her word to call traditionalists Nazis, which is really funny because they are heavily associated with and probably funded by a literal former Nazi. You're a Hungarian Jew mm -hmm. who escaped the Holocaust mm -hmm. by posing as a, a Christian. Right. And you watch lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, Christian. yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property yes. from the Jews. That's right. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. No problem at all. No feeling of guilt? No. That was quite the 60 Minutes piece from 1998. I would really recommend watching it. But this is all ignoring the more important aspect of the equation, which is that none of this name-calling from Novara Media is an actual argument. It's just trying to put traditionalists into a box and make them look bad. 
which is propagandistic and evil. I mean, like half of this video is them throwing out a bunch of buzz terminology that they know their audience will be offended by to create negative associations with traditionalism. Some tradwives have allied themselves with the conservative right by taking aggressively transphobic stances. Tradwife culture is dominated by aggressively anti-abortion, anti-birth control, and anti-sex views. Yeah, if you want to be a stay-at-home mom, then you're transphobic and you want to take women's rights away. That's basically what they're saying when I bet that most of these trad wives outside of the internet aren't even that political. However, Novara Media is so hell-bent on propagandizing people into hating traditional households that they even go to the point where they really are stretching to relate housewives to people that those housewives would personally hate. If you want to know with certainty whether the tradwife trend is an empowering reclamation of domestic labor or just regular old sexism made palatable with TikTok aesthetics, just look at the kind of men who approve of it. I don't like girls who are over sociable. I don't like girls who know lots of people. I don't like girls who are always out. Okay, except there's one major problem here. Andrew Tate isn't a traditionalist. He's a guy who is heavily in favor of sexual promiscuity and infidelity, which traditionalists hate. You even showed that in your video with this tweet here that has a message that is very against promiscuity. You also featured women like Estique several times in your video, who is so devoutly against promiscuity and going outside the relationship that she won't even go to the gym without her husband. I do not go to the gym without my husband, ever. I did this when I was single, and when I tell you the amount of people, men, that walk up to me in the gym, it's countless. And a married woman, whether she has a ring on her finger or not, men just sometimes don't follow those boundaries, and it's not about trust, it's about removing yourself from a situation before it can even happen. Not to mention that Andrew Tate ran a cam girl business, which is something that traditionalists also don't like, which you also acknowledged earlier by calling them anti-sex. Did you even research this group? It's hard to believe that, especially when this video spends all this time crapping on the lifestyle, but zero time actually going over why women want to be traditional. Okay, so while I think all these things explain the political impact of the trad wife trend, they don't explain why it's so appealing in the first place. The answer is simple. Modern life, in many ways, sucks. It's hard to make the case in an era of low wages, high anxiety, precarious work, and extortionate rents that women are liberated just through entering the labor market. Okay, but people being poor is not the major argument for traditional homes. I understand that you're taking that angle so you can promote communism, but the big argument for a woman staying home is so that there's a parent there to take care of the kids instead of having someone else raise them. It's also about separation of labor so that each partner can specialize at their talent and create a better product for the household. But like I said, this video literally responds to none of the arguments that tribe wives have for why they want that lifestyle even the stuff around birth control. Tradwife, religious, and conservative advocates have taken to TikTok in order to push disinformation about birth control. This can range from falsely calling the pill a carcinogenic to hyping out the rhythm or pull-out methods on social media. Just to be clear, these are less forms of contraception than they are playing pregnancy roulette. First of all, just from a self-preservation perspective, if you're going to go full Andrew Tate and sleep with lots of women, then you should never trust a woman who says she's on birth control. Though understand that the trad wife argument about birth control is in the context of a committed relationship and the Christians you hate so much have always preached against the kind of sexual promiscuity that would make not taking birth control dangerous. Second, like any medication, birth control has its side effects and that's not just some crazy conspiracy theory or some bad life plan that will lead to an unintended pregnancy. If you wear a condom properly, cycle track, and use a condom with pullout during the ovulation period, then there is virtually zero chance that you will get a woman pregnant and then you don't have to take a drug for years that alters your body's chemistry. This commentary video is so disingenuous in the way it criticizes traditionalism. And on top of that, they provide zero alternatives or solutions that would make people's lives better than the thing that they are criticizing. So, what to do about it? I think it means generating a different vision of fulfillment, happiness, emotional nourishment, and yeah, family life, which isn't predicated on the patriarchal domination of women. Work won't set women free, and neither will being ruled by men. It's freedom, equality, and reciprocal care that will. That doesn't mean anything. It's just a bunch of words that sound good, because I as a viewer have no idea how to turn my household into something ideal based on what you said. It just seems like you're using a bunch of big words to hide the fact that you don't actually have an alternative that will make people happier and more fulfilled. 
However, what I really hope for is that in the future, I don't have to explain to you guys that this is pure propaganda for you to notice it. And when I say propaganda, I'm not using it as a term to define something that I disagree with, nor am I using the more liberal Edward Bernays definition of the word as a term for influencing technique. Propaganda is a negative. It's a deliberate technique to get you to believe and act on something false by using manipulative techniques like only talking about one side of the argument, calling your opponents a bunch of names instead of responding to their ideas, and saying something is bad without providing any good alternatives. The only purpose of such material is to break things down and turn the viewer into someone useless. Again, it's hard to believe that this stuff is not nefarious, particularly when four years ago, Ash said this. And I very much believe that your audience is only as stupid as you treat them. So if you deliver things with nuance, if you deliver things with complexity, you give them something of real substance to agree with or disagree with, then you'll have a really great audience. Then why do you treat your audience like they are complete morons by trying to trick them with partial citations that don't lead to your actual resources? Why do you offer no nuance by not actually addressing the tribe wife arguments and by suggesting that everyone who wants to stay home is a racist and a misogynist. There was no steel manning of the opposition's arguments whatsoever. An intelligent person would take on their opponent's strongest arguments, but clearly Novara Media believes their audience is stupid, so they didn't do that. But the great thing is, and I've said this a bunch of times in this channel before, is that all you have to do to fix the problem is simply recognize propaganda, and it doesn't work on you. And it doesn't take an incredibly advanced intelligence to do that. You just have to know the tricks and watch what they are doing instead of listening to what they're saying. People who aren't trying to manipulate you towards an agenda won't do what Novara Media did in their video, and as soon as you see these tactics used, you should immediately stop listening to the speaker because they aren't someone who is acting in good faith or your best interest. Anyway, thanks for watching, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.